So here I am going to roll a coil out of a lump of clay. Of the three basic sculpting processes, coil, pinch, and slab, I hear the most complaints about coils. The key is you have to focus on what you are doing. The first thing I do is I take the lump of clay and I roll it between my hands to get a very crude coil, something that's oblong and pretty thick to start with. Then I'm going to put that crude coil down on a surface and gently roll it back and forth, feeling for the lumps as I go, trying to get it as smooth as I can. I have to pay attention to what I'm doing and feel for the thicker and the thinner parts. I cannot make it thicker anywhere, but I can always make it thinner when I need to. So I have to feel where it's lumpy or where it's thicker and roll it accordingly. I have to look at what I'm doing. I started rolling my coil between my hands and then I moved to a canvas board. After that, I wanted a smoother coil, so I moved to the lab table. This lab table has a nice smooth surface and as long as I don't press too hard, it won't stick too much, especially since I've already rolled it on the canvas, which dried it out a little bit. Coils can be of all different sizes. You probably don't want one thicker than an inch, but this one is about the width of my little finger, which is something that I can work with now. Coils can form layers and loops and all sorts of shapes. Right now I'm going to make this one into a spiral, and to do so I'm going to score and slip it. I'm scoring it now all on one side to make sure that it will stick better. Anytime you join clay together, you need to score and slip or it will not remain stuck. At this point, I'm going to speed up the video so you can see the basic process. I score, I use the gooeyest slip I can off the bottom of the slip cup, and then I roll, and I score, and I slip, and I roll, and I score, and I slip, and I roll, and I score, and I slip. As it goes round and round, scoring and slipping will keep it together. At this point, I end up with a beautiful spiral coil. I could use this on the side of something and give a nice coil design to it, or I can use it as the bottom for some sort of vase. If I wish to do that and I want it to be watertight, I need to do something to plug that hole. So I make a little plug, I score it, I slip it, I stick it in place, and there I have a nice beautiful coil. Making a good and regular coil takes practice and you need to focus on what you're doing. The question now is how will you use your coils? Will you use them as the beautiful objects of art that they can be? Can you use them in construction, giving thrust and counter thrust to your design? Or do you smooth them out and use them as a building technique? The choice is up to you.